This is Victor Tucid with EVE Online. We're doing Fleet 101 with Brave Dojo. <clears throat> We're just going to be running through a few things, talking about uh, basic fleets, how to do it, what's done. They gave me an outline. I'll probably follow it and skip around and, and break things like I normally do. First things first, all of you seem to have been able to join a fleet. That's awesome. Uh, I know I have people in here that are somewhat more advanced than others, and some are just barely brand new. If everyone looks at your fleet tab, if you jump over to where it actually puts you in a fleet, you should see that there are four squads. One's called Lobby, one's called Brand New, one's called No Sum, and the third one is Hexer Pro. I enabled Free Move on the room, on the fleet, so you should be able to drag your name into a slot. I need everyone to drag themselves into their knowledge level of fleets. If you're brand new, throw yourself in brand new. If you know some, throw yourself in know some. If you're here just because you want to like show off and be a smarty pants, put yourself in Hacks or Pro. Adrian and Gallia, JR and Riker, we're waiting on you. Let me know if you need help finding that. Riker doesn't want to move. Are you pulling your name and dragging? Because it's I see that you've already moved. It does it does have a little bit of a delay. Alright, cool. Uh Hadrian and Ingalia, do you need any kind of help moving? You can talk to me in fleet chat if you don't have comms. Galia is not on comms. Isn't there something about uh, timers affecting uh, being able to shift positions in fleet? For example, uh, uh, system change timers. You're still screaming, screaming Rieger. And uh, yeah, if you just warp, dock, or jump, you have to wait a few seconds. So don't have Hadrian in here. Oop, oh, there's Hadrian. Hadrian, go ahead and put yourself uh, in the fleet tab where your skill level is. You should be able to see brand new Nosam or Hacks or Pro. Just go ahead and drop your character uh, whatever you think your fleet skill level is. Just so I know, kind of know who's new, who's not. Okay, while well they're getting squared away, I see that we've got three, two people in brand new and seven in no sum, eight in no sum. The people who are brand new, which you've just joined as a fleet, if you've played other MMOs, it's things as squads or teams or <clears throat> basically a small group of individuals collected for a single task. The way that this game organizes it is that it organizes it in a fleet with a wing, lobby, or uh, squads. Each squad can have a squad leader, each wing can have a wing commander. A wing is comprised of squads and a fleet is comprised of wings. If you've got any kind of military knowledge, you'll see that it's pretty standard. I'm not going to go over the fleet finder or history or anything like that because apparently we can either use it or you've clicked into the link. Does anyone have questions on the basic fleet window? I'm going to assume if no one X'd up in fleet, we don't have any questions. First step, does can someone tell me what it means to X up in fleet? JR, tell me what it is. Uh, do you just put an X in fleet? Typically an FC will ask for it if he needs to know how many people are either at the gate or not at the gate. Or right, it's basically a way of raising your hand. Um, it's It's... 
used for different things. People will use different letters. Uh, if I'm putting a fleet together and I've got 100 people in here, I'm going to say put an X in fleet if you're flying Logi, put a Y in fleet if you're wearing flying fast tackle, you know, stuff like that. It just kind of gives the FC an idea of what he has or gets a quick response. It doesn't require typing. It doesn't require people jumbling up comms. It's just quick and easy. Plus, it gives me stuff I can click on, like your names. All right, we should have the last person. Is everyone docked in PZMA? Everyone out here? Are we waiting on anyone? Eh, that works for Lippy. All right, everyone on dock. You should now be flying around in space. You should see your ship, the map, and all the fun stuff that's around you. If you've come out of a Fortizar, you should see a Fortizar, etc. If you were in the Soto factory, SOTA, you should see that I am out of the, out of the factory and warping off. When I tell you to, I'm going to need everyone to warp to me. Who does not know how to warp to somebody? Put an X in fleet if you do not know how to warp to somebody. Shit, was I in Fortress? Ah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was in Fortress, not so I was in GE this morning and forgot where I was. Okay. I've got two people who don't, don't know. If you look at the fleet tab, or in the fleet chat, you can right click on someone's name and highlight fleet. This will give you the fleet options menu. This will be give you the ability to warp at zero, warp at 100, and a bunch of cool other stuff. It will also let you show info, kick members if you're the fleet boss, you know, that, that kind of thing. So everyone go ahead and warp to me at zero. I'm in a deep safe, so someone would have to scan us out. I've got JR. I've got Screaming. I've got a bunch more. Alright, I got nine here. Am I missing anybody? Except in fleet if you are not able to. Are you still traveling here, Riker? Oh, never mind, I see you. Oh, someone warped to me at a hundred. No, thirty, sorry. Or did you just run out of cab? Anyway. All right, everyone's on the field. Everyone can see one another. Depending on how you set your overview, you now have the ability to see the people around you. If you toggle, toggle your tabs, you may or may not see them. Can everyone see everyone in a overview tab? You should be a purple color or a different color depending on what you created. Please X up in fleet if you do not see friendly names in chat. Or, I'm sorry, in, in overview or don't know how to find friendly names in overview. Alexa makes a good point, and you can speak up in chat. Um, if you're using the standard overview on the wiki, which I believe is the ZS install, or the ZS overview, you should be able to click friendly, and everything will show up nice and purple. And just a heads up, this class is completely informal. You're welcome to speak up, ask questions, talk. Uh, I'm going to go through bullet points, but the class will be a lot more interesting if people have questions or say things. Because listening to me drone on is just not fantastic. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go over quite a few things today. We're gonna do fleet formations. 
basic overview use, tack overlay, how to use the overlay, how to use the overview. We're going to go over drones, logi reps, targeting, uh, how to anchor, what anchoring is. Uh, we've already covered warping to fleet members. Does anybody need to go over that one more time? Okay, I'm going to consider that done. If you have questions, speak up. We're going to go over what a fleet warp is, what a squad warp is, what a wing warp is. We're going to go over the colors of the gates, red and green. We're going to go over aligning and everything to deal with it. We're also going to go over broadcasting and broadcast history for combat. Of those things, someone pick something. Where do you guys want to start? What's interesting? What do you guys want to know? And if nobody speaks up, I will pick on somebody. All right, Riker wants to warp together. So a fleet warp can be done in three different ways. Four if you count alone. So at the very core, it's you're warping yourself around. You have control. You tell yourself where you're going to go. The next one is a squad warp. That's when a squad leader takes his squad, which are the people underneath him on the hierarchy, and controls where they warp and how they warp. Next up is wing, which warps the wing and all squads. After the, war after the wing is the fleet, which is the fleet boss or whoever uh, the fleet boss puts in that position, they control the fleet. Right now, because I'm the fleet boss and the, uh, I'm in the lead fleet position. Does it have a title? No, it's just fleet. Uh, I'm able to warp us around. So if I decide that I'm going to go, you know what, we're just, we're just going to go fly away. Oh, I'm already at that one. That's why I can't use it. Hang on a sec. So I'm going to warp to warp fleet within 100 of this bookmark that I have. Now, taking a fleet means that you do not stop your ship. Everyone's going to warp off. Everyone should be warping. You may see people in warp with you. You may not, depending on how they were aligned. Please note, because certain people were not aligned to where I was going, they were already pointing the right way, or they were not. And ta-da, we all land. There should be two more, I think. I cannot align everyone. That's going to be my next thing. Oh, did I leave salvage on the field? Eh, anyway. So, that's what a fleet warp is. Fleet, fleet warp. So we're going to try something. We're going to go to a gate. So everyone align to TWJ. Now when that's called out, you can do it a few ways. The, most, the easiest way that I find to do it is to hold your A key. And you'll notice above your item, it'll, or above your tack overview thingy, I, what, what's that called? I've never had to actually call it out. I don't know, where you see your capacitor and your health, your uh, shield armor, the fun stuff. Hold A, it'll say align to, and we're going to align to the TWJ gate. Now I see some people moving. Oh, cool, I'll call it a HUD. I see some people moving, I see some people not moving. Is there anyone who cannot find how to align? That caracal, are you... Okay, you're actually moving, you're just slow. <laughs> Alright, because everyone's aligned, when I fleet warp us, Everyone should travel together at the same speed. Come on, they work. There it goes. Everyone's working together. We're all going to land at the same time. This is a good way to keep the fleet together, good way to make sure that nobody gets caught or left out. And if you're aligned, you will fly with the fleet at the same speed. Within a fleet, you're only going to warp as fast as the slowest person in your fleet. This is the reason why fast tackle may not want to warp with the fleet. They will warp ahead, they'll be quicker. 
if you've got battleships, battle cruisers, titans, and they're warping, it's it's going to be a very slow warp. Did that character will come with me? Yeah. Okay. That was aligning. Any questions? No questions. Then I'll ask y'all a question. Um, um, something completely different. How do I use the player jump gates to get to you? I'm in G8. Oh, you actually need the path how to get to uh, PZMA? Yes, but there's like a green line on the star map. So I assume you can skip some systems. Oh yeah, look at the, uh, look on the map, uh, the F10 map, look for the green, like the green lines that are kind of like uh, an arc. Mm -hmm. And once you get into the system where the beginning of the line is, you should be able to right click in space and go to structures and you'll see the, the gate that, and they're, they're named after the system they go to. So you're looking for... Upwell jump gate. Uh, yeah, okay. Are you able to see it in that uh, system? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Were you able to see it? Uh, not really. Because, uh, there's a route that the auto routing system has made, but then uh, there's the screen where you can make a short shortcut, I believe. Right. Yeah, the, the, the auto won't use jump bridges. Yeah, jump bridge. Okay, that was the name. Yeah, you have to actually manually accept jump bridges. You have to find them, go to them. Jump gates, jump bridges, okay. different names. Okay. Alrighty. And, uh, and yeah and the jump bridge ah, ah. Okay. yep seen a few all right everyone else we're going to talk about anchoring who can tell me what it means to anchor to keep at range of your anchor point or pilot there you go. So everyone anchor on me 500. You, you get to pick whether you want to orbit or if you want to keep it range. Everyone anchor on Victor Atusid at 500. Anchoring does a cool thing. It lets one player control where everyone goes. This is very helpful for either snipers or logi or s Riker. If you right click my ship or my name in the overview, you are able to select an option to either keep me at range 500 meters or orbit me at 500 meters. It has to be watch list or uh, in space and not fleet window if you're trying that. You may want to do watch list next, so it's easier for people to uh, anchor. Cool. I'll cover that then. Yeah, you can't do it in Fleet Window. What you can do in Fleet Window, though, is right-click my name, hit Fleet, and hit Add to Watch List. The watch list is a separate window that pops up that keeps the hot topics available to see. It'll show you, if you've ever used drones, it'll show you the... Yep, I'll cover that Fleet Bay. It'll show you... If you're on the same grid, the shield, health, and hull. If you're not, it will show you just in a just a blank square next to the name. Generally, FCs will state certain individuals in certain ships are going to be hotlisted for Logi. Usually, it's important people, important ships, etc. So, has everyone added me to the? Watch list. Except in fleet if you have not been able to add me to the watch list.
Okay, I'm going to assume everyone has me on the watch list. So at this point, you can right-click that watch list, and you can do things like uh, anchor on me. You can target me from the watch list, and you can see my health. Now, I notice we've got a couple of big ships that might be a little slower. So at that point, you can either use uh, your afterburner or micro warp drive to keep up with me. Does anybody need to go over uh, speed management? Please X up in fleet if you need to go over speed management. What do you mean by speed management? When you're anchoring on somebody and you're setting to keep 500, right now I see that there's most of you over 1,000 or 1,200 meters away from me. I'm in a tiny ship that's pretty fast, which means that some may not be able to keep up with me, especially the cruisers like the Caracal and the Osprey. So they need to burn their either afterburner or micro warp drive to catch up and keep, uh, keep it 500. It's basically just controlling the range. Now, if I... Riker, in the overview where you can see all of your targets, if you have the ztac s overview installed, you click on the Friendly tab and it will show uh, distances. So you should be able to see how far away you are from me. You can also hover over my icon if you see me on the screen, but that's a pain in the rear. All right, now I've got everyone except one keeping me at 500. The one person who's orbiting me, if I were to warp us all, would be left behind. Now it's a harpy, so it has a quick align time. It'd probably catch up. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn my afterburner on, which means I'm going to go from 440 meters per second to about 1,000. Those of you who are in frigates with afterburners, you'll catch up and keep up. Those of you in heavier ships that only have afterburners and can't reach my speeds, you're going to get left behind. This is, this is something the FC needs to be aware of, or whoever the anchor is needs to be aware of. If you're too slow to keep up, they need to cool their speeds. They need to slow down. They need to keep you close. Oh, Flippy, I know. That's cool. And if you turned your prop mod off, you probably wouldn't be able to keep with me. So what I did is I turned my speed from full to about half, so I'm going at about 645 meters per second, which means that my fleet can keep up with me, my squad can keep up with me. This means that we are allowed tighter groupings and tighter controls. So now you're going to see me swing a right turn, and everyone's going to keep with me. This is anchoring. Any questions about anchoring? How did you make yourself post lower? On the HUD at the bottom, unless you've moved it, there's a blue bar that shows your current speed. You can click anywhere in there to set your speed. So I just clicked in the middle of that blue bar and it turned my speed to half. It'll also show an alert that says speed changed to and it'll just show you. Do you see that? Yep. yep. Cool. Any more questions about anchoring? Okay, next up, we're just going to keep floating around. We're going to switch to broadcasting. Can somebody tell me what it means to broadcast? Uh, uh, it pops up a little alert in the, at the bottom of the fleet window when someone clicks something and hits broadcast. Okay, where else does it pop up? I see that two people have already done some broadcasting. History, you're right, Bear. Where else? There's one more place. Watch list. Oh, there's actually one more place after that one. So yes, it will pop up on the watch list. I completely forgot about that. It'll actually show up in your overview. So right now someone has selected jump to gate on TWJ. It went to the top of your overview, and it shows an icon on the far right. If I was going to tag somebody, like JR, 
Okay, so apparently 1 through uh, D doesn't work in the overview, but apparently it shows up on top of a ship. So if you look on top of his ship, you should see a floating white 1. Can everyone see that? And everyone should see that JR's name shot to the top of their overview, and it's showing a target icon. Does everyone see that? Please accept if you do not. Mark, are you, do you see JR in your overview? Yes. I'm sorry, second. What I'm missing, yeah, what I'm missing is right now uh, is uh, the, on the overview panel. Huh? It's going to be a small icon all the way to the right of the screen. It should look like a crosshair. All right, all right, I got it. Yep, no worries. This is a way for people to call targets. This is a way for people to acknowledge um, orders. This is a way for people to say primary, secondary, and assign targets. So if, I've, if I'm in FC and I'm commanding snipers and an NT fleet, uh, NT being interceptors or fast tackle, I can say, NTs, your primaries are ABC. And snipers, your primaries are one, two, three, and I can tag other other ships those numbers and letters. That's just a way to give a quick overview of okay, I need to shoot these people in this order. So that's tagging. Let's talk about broadcasts in the history window. Does anybody need help finding the history window for broadcasts? Okay, if you go to your fleet and you see the My Fleet and you see everyone who's all in the, in the fleet wing and squads, at the top of the tab it should say My Fleet, History, and Fleet Finder. Please X up in Fleet if you do not see that. Okay, everyone should be able to click History. And right now you should have about 10 items in there. Target J.R. Hendrick. Version is in a position. Please X up in fleet if you do not see that. Cool. Everyone should see at the bottom of their screen of that fleet uh, menu. They should see a bunch of cool looking icons. One's an eyeball, one's a bunch of squares, one's a shield, one's a target, one's a person, and a few other icons. If you hover over them, it'll tell you what each of them are. Go ahead and click a few just to see what they do. And as you can see the history, everyone's broadcasting, everyone's in the history. You can target from the history. Depending on what is broadcast means what you can target. So some of you are broadcasting that you're in position at a gate. If you want to target that, you would actually target the gate. Some of you are saying that... Are we still sitting on a gate? Yeah, we're sitting on a gate. Okay, never mind. I'm like, why do I see a random hell? All right, well, I'm going to warp you over somewhere away from the gate. Go ahead and take the warp. Oh, um, while we're doing it, taking the warp means you're not stopping your ship. You're allowing the fleet warp. If someone is fleet warping you and you do not want to follow that fleet warp, you can hold control and jam spacebar a few times. That will stop your ship. It will cancel your warp and cancel any orders you have. Okay, back to broadcasting. At the top of your fleet bar, you will see it says fleet 13 members. There's a hamburger menu there. There's those four white lines. If you click that menu and you scroll down until you see, yours is going to be a little different than mine. We're going to look for broadcast settings. 
if you open up that broadcast settings window, you'll see that a bunch of them have X's next to them, and they all have a, a gray bar at the right. Please exit complete if you do not see this. Okay, everyone should have that broadcast settings window open. Now this is something cool that you can do. Per event, you can set a color. Everyone select Need Shield and change the color to the light blue in the bottom left hand corner. Once you've made that change, look at the history window. You should notice that uh, I'm going to butcher that name, so I'm just going to call you Nair. So you should see that Nair has asked for shield twice. Three times if you scroll down. Please put an X in chat if you don't see the change in color. Okay. This is a neat tool if you're Logi or if you're in a fleet often to see broadcasts. If you want to know where to go or, or if you want things to pop out at you when you're reading that history, you can set a color uh, however you like in here. That will, that will show you, like if you need shields, if you need armor, you can set a different color so that you, know, you can kind of differentiate between what you're looking at. So if you're in a shield lodgy and someone says needs armor, you don't you don't want to you, you want to make sure that's a different color so that you don't waste the time locking them up when they don't need shields. Now of course if they need armor they need shields, but you know what I mean. Any questions about the broadcast settings menu and the color coding? Any questions at all about broadcasting? Uh, is the need backup option really no. used much? Every once in a while someone will spam it in fleet just to be a dick, but it's it's not really used. Uh, so I guess I shouldn't assign a color. Yeah, you, you don't need to. Now, instead of the need backups button, people do something called putting W's in fleet. If you're in fleet in a system with a bunch of people and you know and you're doing an operation or something, the W's mean warp to me. So someone may say W's in fleet in comms, and then, yep, JR just did it, and then that gives everybody a chance to say, oh, hey, I need to warp that to that guy. He's either achieving an objective, he's got a tackle, or he is tackled. Everyone needs to get to him immediately. FCs will generally tell you when it is acceptable to put W's in fleet and when it is not. They will also tell you uh, whether or not to listen to the W's. So the W's in fleet will show up. The FC will even say, warp to W's, warp to W's, or, or they will tell you whatever command they use. Um, FC's are different. They'll basically say, go do it or don't. When you're in standing, you can always... <laughs> you can always... When you're in standing, you can always warp to W's. Um, if you're in the same system, standing fleets are several systems, so it's always a, a mix of if you can see them or not. Anything so far overall? Riker, no. You can right click from from the chat menu. You can click fleet. And you can click warp too. You guys stay here. I'm gonna warp myself and then I will I will uh, show you a WWW. Dick. All right, Felipe is primary. Everybody can lock up Felipe. Don't shoot. Just lock him up. Felipe, has it? Who has yellow boxed you? Who has not? Has anybody yellow boxed you other than me? Okay, I'm 
here? Who should I? You can work to me. Okay, thank you. Who does not have Felipe yellow boxed? Uh, he wrote in the chat. Everyone except Riker. Riker's in a shuttle, so I don't blame him. <laughs> All right. Um, everyone understands what it means, what a primary is, how to pick a target, stuff like that. Is there any questions about that? All right, everyone unlock Felipe. You can do that by either clicking shift control and then clicking on his icon, or you can right click and unlock target. You can also use the radial menu. You hold down left click and go down. I always forget that menu exists. I find in some cases it's really, really fast. Yeah, I'm, I'm old school. I completely forget that thing exists. All right, everyone stay here. I'm going to warp off, and then I'll have you warp to me on Ws. One thing to note, if you warp to somebody while they're in warp, you will warp to the location where they were when you clicked warp. So you have to wait for somebody to land on grid before you warp to them. The next thing we're going to talk about is why the FC is yelling, about you, yelling at you. FCs have several things going on. They're in several comm channels, and they're listening to several people. If they solo you out, you have either screwed something up, or you're not listening to what they asked you to do. Generally, most FCs don't have the time to sit there and, and teach you during fleets. That's what something like this class is for. If you're having issues, can't follow directions, or just you're completely lost, ideally you would find somebody in your channel to whisper to that can kind of help you out or tell you what you're doing wrong. FCs aren't yelling at you to be mean. They're not yelling at you to hate you know so that you hate your guts. They're trying to do something massive. They're trying to do uh, either a task, an objective, or they've got so many things going on. It's just it's really hard for them to say. To, to take the time to tell you what you're doing wrong. Don't take it personally, everybody does it. When I was first learning to FC, I was following an old, an old player who is no longer with us that uh, he chewed me out for a good 20 minutes after the fleet because I wasn't listening. And then I was a new, new guy, I was screwing around, flying around, jumping gates when I wasn't supposed to, just doing stupid shit, and I got chewed out for it. Like in, in fleet, he's, he just basically ignored me. I was on my own. He, he wasn't doing anything to me then. Afterwards, I got the, I got the talking to. So if someone's, if someone's yelling at you, don't take it personally. Just understand that they're, they're expecting a different behavior, different actions from you. Um, don't take it as a personal attack. They don't hate your life, you know, stuff like that. If you have questions, you can always type in fleet chat unless they, they go battle comms, which means no talking. Um, they generally okay with text chat. Plus, you can always ask in like the dojo or corp or, you know, there's plenty of places to, to talk about it to find out what you're doing wrong. All right, is everyone with me? Is there anyone who is not with the, the fleet? I think I've got everybody. All right, so I covered fleet warp. I covered anchor. I covered why the FC is yelling. I covered broadcasting. Are there any questions so far? I'm getting it to Felipe. I'm going to do that when we jump. Any questions? What kind of timer is screaming? Engagement timers? Uh, engagement, in, engagement timers, yeah, uh, preventing you from jumping or docking or stuff okay. like that. When you're in a fleet or just on your own, when you engage somebody and lock them up, 
Just because you lock them up does not mean you committed a crime or committed an action that will give you an engagement timer. The only time you actually get one of those is when you pull a trigger. And what I mean by that is you commit an action, you do damage, you fight, etc. You activate a module, you send a drone, anything like that. There's a thing called combat timers, there's a thing called capsuleer lock-off timers, NPC lock-off timers, limited engagements, and a whole bunch of other things. Does everyone have a general idea of what those timers are and what they do? Except in Fleet, if you do not know any of those timers, even if it's just one of them you don't know, except. Ignalia, what timers don't you know? And you're able to say all of them. What, what are they doing? You're not allowed to log out? Or? Okay, depending on the timer, there's different limitations. So if you locked up uh, Felipe earlier, you should have a red exclamation point in your top left corner. Well, maybe not because he, he fought me and I fought back, so maybe it's just me and him. Anyway, it'll tell you that it's a capsulated log off timer. It will tell you why it's there. Mine is that it was combat with another capsuleer. It will tell you the it will tell you the consequence. Mine is that my ship will remain in space, and when if I logged out until this timer expires. So right now, if I logged out of this character, if I went AFK, and logged out of the game, I would I would remain where I'm sitting in space for the next seven and a half minutes. Meaning anybody could come shoot me, anybody could come lock me up. Sorry, say again. Seven and a half minutes? Uh, it starts at 10 minutes. It's a 10 minute engagement timer. Or is it 15? I think it's 15. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it should be 15. 15, yeah. So it starts at 15 minutes. Your ship stays in space. It's able to be shot, looted, all the fun stuff. If you're ever in combat and you disconnect, if your computer loses internet, that combat timer will keep your ship fighting. By fighting, I mean it's a sitting duck. Your modules deactivate. You don't do anything. You just sit there. Your drones go dead like you're not in your ship. For all... Okay. You won't actually just sit there. You will warp off to a random place. In not the if place you're... In the not if you're scrammed. Yeah. Yeah, but generally you won't really be... If you're in a fleet. I apologize. I was, I was thinking more of small gang or 1v1 combat. I should have stated. My apologies. Yeah, um, you'll generally warp off. If you're if you're disrupted or scrammed, you will not. Okay, so as long as nothing else is keeping me there, I will just warp off to a random Yes, place. you will be able to be probed down if they have combat scanners, so they can still find you. But you will be in space f until the timer goes, and then once the timer goes, you will disappear from space. Okay. Oh, okay. does it, Alex? That's new to me. Does it really recall them? That's awesome. It and it'll, it, that is that can be deadly though. Anyone who has done you know any ratting knows that if you if your drones are really far away and it recalls them, that it will sit there with your ship and wait for the drones to come back before it lets it lets you leave. That can also be an issue where um, those drones could be webbed and they're not going to get there anytime soon. No problem, Barry. You have a great day. All right. Any questions about that? Okay. We've already talked about broadcasting for reps. Everyone knows um, how to broadcast for armor and shields. You can set up a hotkey for it. You can also do it from the history window. Does anybody need more information on broadcasting for reps? When do you broadcast? You said when? Yeah. Yeah, in what cases do you broadcast for reps? When you start it, it's going to be depending on the fleet. Um, sometimes the FC will say don't broadcast for reps unless you are a specific squad or a specific ship. Sometimes um, you're flying around just your friends and the Lodgy will say broadcast for reps. Uh, generally the Lodgy anchor will make the call on who can broadcast who cannot. They will ignore broadcasts from people they do not want broadcasting. 
Uh, if you're in a large clusterfuck of a fleet, I'm talking like 300 people, fast tackle, usually do not get reps. So don't call for them. Um, if there's something, if you're in a frigate and there's something like a battleship on the field, you're probably not going to get reps. That's up to the Logi or the FC. You can broadcast, but good luck. Uh, everyone knows the shortcuts for broadcasting for stuff? Nope. That you're right. Uh, Lex. All right, I, I customized my my uh, hotkeys, so I can't actually tell you what to click. Um, does somebody have the defaults that can look in their settings? Because I don't remember. Uh, default keys for what? For broadcasting for reps. Either sh shield or armor. Let's see if I can find it. Because I have my set. I'm not sure if they are bound by default. They're under shortcuts navigation. Oh yeah, it uh, looks like all of them are unbound by default except for spotted enemy and broadcast target. Fantastic. Target. All right, so there's if you go if you press escape into your and to go into your options menu, you jump over to the shortcuts and the navigation submenu. At the top of the list, you're able to set your broadcast shortcuts. This is generally good for if you're in a fleet and you need to broadcast without clicking buttons, you can set it to a keystroke. Okay. So that'll give you some fun. That'll uh, allow you to set broadcasts and do other cool shortcuts. Everyone's configuration is different, so I can't really tell you. Uh, can't really tell you anything like, you know, you should set this key for this action. Everyone, everyone's got a different keyboard. What do you use personally, for example? Personally, I use uh, Control Shift X and Control Shift C. X is for shield, C is for armor. But again, I, I rebound in the majority of my keyboard. I don't know if those have a uh, have an option as is. I saw a brave uh, YouTube video where they suggested to use uh, Shift A, Shift C, Shift S, for example. Oh, cool! I didn't know they actually did that. Riker, uh, it's actually hit escape to open up your client settings. And then instead of doing display options, it's the third or fourth tab. Okay, cool. Does anybody have drones equipped with them right now? Yes. Okay, go, everyone go ahead and deploy your drones if you have them. Okay, everyone should now see on their overview a whole bunch of drones flying around. If not, you may have to select a different tab. I think we're being invaded. Ball is ping the wrong uh, comms. <laughs> no words. I'm sorry. No, Bala, we got like 10 minutes left. We can we can move. <laughs> no worries. I didn't look. They've all jumped to SV5. Everyone in the Fleet 101, go ahead and jump up to Echo Fleet. I am so sorry. It's a lesson in moving. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're following those guys up north, can you tell them the bravest forming they'll come?
Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, the cool thing with drones is most of you can't see this. Uh, Felipe, could you go fly like 20k off of me? Okay, everyone can see Felipe flying away from us. Go ahead and right click him. And assign drones to him. If you can't do it that way, select your drone window. Select the group the drones are in. Hover over assist and select Felipe. So everyone should be able to have those drones assist Felipe at this time. Nope. Okay, look in your drone window right-click the drones that are in space, hover over assist, and select Felipe. Your drones will go fly over and start hovering around him. When you set assisting drones, that means that the drones will target and listen to Felipe's commands. Yes, don't attack, assist. Is someone attacking you? Or pop if you need to. Alright, Felipe, let me know if there's an issue. So who's attacking you right now? Who is red boxing Felipe? Do you know how to stop red boxing with drones? Right click drones in space and select. It's oh, fine. you got it? Okay. And Alex brings up a good point. You can also do it from the watch list if you've added your intended drone target. Anyway, assisting drones means that they basically listen to that one person. You don't have to sit there and control your drones, they'll do it for you. Uh, a lot of times in fleets, this is done in, in just. Uh, they used to be called tar, tar balls. I don't know what they're called now. Anybody know? Uh, what when you there? get a bunch of like drone boats together and uh, assist it to an in Inti. Uh, the Inti is drone bunny. Yeah, okay. drone bunny. I like that term. Anyway, the drone bunny go ahead goes ahead and uses all the drones to attack a specific target. Does a lot of damage. Does a lot of fun. Everyone, you can recall your drones. Is there any questions about using uh, Drone Bunny or assisting your drones to another individual? Okay, doesn't seem like there's any questions on that. Uh, the last thing we have is, well, there's two things left to go over. Um, one is just a general overview of the overlay. We've gone through a bits and pieces of it, so we're pretty much done there. Um, the other thing is starbursting. Starbursting is... Yeah, it's, it's not great um, in large groups, because if you warp around a lot, you'll lose a bunch of drones, especially if they're that far away from their original users. What do you mean, what's going on? What'd you miss? Oh, he's not in... Oh, did he not move? Ah, yeah. He must have been yeah. confused. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, we got we got we got kicked out of our our, our uh, classroom. 
anyway, um, any questions about the general overview? How does you, how to use the zoom? How to do the setups? How to look at targets? Anything like that? How do you look at targets? Okay, from your overview, uh, everyone, hold. I think the default key is C. Hold in the C key and press T W J. Left click on T W J. This is called tracking. It will whip your camera around to look at an object. This is useful when you're doing D scans. D scanning is another another class. I can give you a quick overview if anybody just flat out doesn't know what a D scan is. Except in Fleet if you do not know what a D scan is. JR, a D scan is a directional scan. Do you know how to pull that window up? Yep. Okay. Do you, are you familiar with submarine warfare? Oh. Do you know how um, you can do focused radar? Yeah. It's yeah. it's focused radar. So you can set your range, and you can set your angle, and you can scan. So if you want a 360 at 14.3 AU scan, that is everything around you in 14 AU. So we would be able to see everything in the system. If there's a ship on a gate, if there's a ship on a unit, um, we would be able to see it. Everything's within that 14.3 U or AU. If you want to narrow your search down to say, okay, I'm looking at that gate. Um, I want to know if anybody's sitting on that gate or if there's a gate camp. You would narrow your search. Coal train. What? Anyway, you would narrow your search in that D scan. So what you would do is, I want to look at the gate, so I'm looking at, it's about 5.9, so I would set my AU to like 10, or 5-ish. Yeah, I'd set it 10. And then I would set my angle to 15, or less, depending on a measure of different things. I would then check the box at the top, that says uh, align with camera. Let me know if you're unable to find the align with camera button. It's a square with a circle inside of it. Okay, I'm assuming everyone has found it. You would then hold C, select your gate, and scan. And you would see within 15 degrees angle directed at that gate, there's an Astros, a rattlesnake, a Rorpal, and a VNI. Somewhere between here and that gate. They're not on grid, so we're not going to see a distance. If you move your camera around with the 15 degree, ang 15 degree angle, you'll see that you can find different people in space. If you press C and click on the Fortress Impasse, you'll see that there's a bunch of Rorquals hanging out around there. There's some Wraiths, uh, Corsair, Coveter, just a bunch of different ships. Go ahead and descan around just to make sure that you can do it. Let me know if you have any questions. Also let me know if you're descanning around and your the scan results don't change. And then one more thing. Um, you can set a filter to one of your overviews so that if you just want to see ships, you can set a ship filter. If you have the ZS uh, overview installed, you can literally select the D-Scan ships defensive option. So uh, while I'm doing D-Scans, uh, my ship's orientation doesn't matter, only the... Company. Correct, and it's centered on your ship. So you're... you're if you're targeting something, you're going to be looking through the bracket that is your ship. Any questions about descanning? Does everyone d use descan on fleets, or is it just a couple of persons? Descan is a general tool you, that should be used whenever. 
yes, you can also descan with fleet filters. Um, in fleets, it's a general awareness tool just to keep aware of what things are. Um, if you want to, if you are a scout, if you are um, a sniper, something like that. If you're looking for content, it's a good way to good way to look for content. It's a useful tool. If you're solo and alone, it's a way to stay safe. You set it to two five AU. You, you keep scanning. Um, by default, the scan button, I think, is V. It may be different. I can't remember. So you just keep scanning. If you see something show up, you narrow your focus down a little bit more. So you say you go from 10 to 5. If they show up again, they're getting close to you. It might be wise to start aligning out and getting, getting ready to run or attack or fight or whatever you're doing. Any questions on the use of D-Scan? Yes, they show well in warp. So like if I, if I went to the gate and then warp back, you would be able to see when I would get, get within range. But you would also have to be scanning and paying attention to it. And uh, how does uh, the D-Scan differ uh, different from uh, Combat, probe. combat probes is active scanning, D scans passive. So actively scanning means that you're sitting there controlling the probes, you're looking for um, items in space, and then not only are you looking for them, you're able to warp to them. And chat brings up a good point. You can not D scan cloaked items, but you can D scan while cloaked. Any questions about D-Scan? Cloaking range is 2,500 meters, unless they've changed that too. Am I wrong on that? Someone correct me if I'm wrong. That's right. Yay! Okay, any questions about the overlay in general? All right, anything, any, any questions in general over anything we've gone over? <laughs> yes, we're gonna start first. Last thing we need to talk about before starbursting is scouting. Did, can somebody tell me what it means to be a plus one? Anybody with a mic want to tell me what it means to be a plus one in a fleet? Felipe also brings up a good point. Make sure you've recalled your drones. I see that someone still has drones out. I have no idea what it is. Okay, being a plus one in a fleet means that if the fleet is traveling, you are one jump ahead of them. You are the first to jump into the system. You give. You are the eyes of the fleet. So if I say, Felipe, plus, plus one me on our trip, and say we're going through TWJ, Felipe would be on his way to warp to TWJ. He would tell me when he has jumped, and he would tell me what he gets on the other side. By the time he's on that other side, we should be landing on that TWJ gate. So that when we jump into TWJ, he's already going to the next gate ahead of us on our path to wherever we're going. Does anybody need further explanation or would like to see a real world trial? Okay, everyone aligned to TWJ. Felipe, would you mind being plus one? Or Alex, because you have a mic. Yeah. yeah I Thank you, Alex. It. Alex, go ahead and plus one to TWJ. On the way. Felipe, you dick. Take the fleet warp. 
Alex, let me know when you're in. And what do you see? I'm landed, nobody on gate. Anybody on local? No, no newt. Okay, gate is red. There's two colors of gates, red and green. Red gates mean when you land on the gate, you do not jump. If we're mid-warp and I say, or the FC says, gate is green, that means as soon as you land on the gate, you're jumping. So he's already, we've got Alex in plus one. He's already over on the other side. There's nothing over there. Gate is now green. Jump, jump, jump. And we don't need to go further. We're going to stay right around here. Okay, at this point, I'm going to pretend that we're being attacked or crashed, or there's someone going to warp onto the gate. Everyone crash back to gate, crash back to gate. Crashing gate means that you're going to jump through the gate as quickly as you can. Prop mods are on. Everyone crash the gate, crash the gate, crash the gate. Prop mods are your afterburner or micro warp drive. Hold cloak on the other side. You have to be in the same sister, Riker. And outside of 100 kilometers. Okay, when you're in PZA, hold cloak. That means do not move, do not break cloak, don't activate modules, etc. At this point, we would be either doing some kind of intel, talking about moves or something. Or, just or de scanning. Intel, kind of whatever we need to be doing while we're cloaked. Top left corner, you can see your cloak is a timer. Uh, mine's at about 10 seconds now. So I have about 10 seconds before my cloak breaks. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of orbit the gate. Let's just orbit the gate at 500. Everybody orbit the gate at 500. Mark, where are you? Correct. Everyone, everyone was holding their gate cloak. Nobody could see anybody. But look how, look how scary we all are in this little blob we've got. <laughs> all right. Um, that's scouting. Um, I'm not going to go over the advanced scouting. They can show you. Someone else can show you the advanced D scans and and the websites to do for that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm old school. I don't use it. So someone else can show that to you. Um, I'm not even sure the link I have is the accurate one, so I'm just not going to share it. Why don't you use it? Personally, I'm. It's quicker to. I, I'm familiar enough with the ships to say, okay, there's, you know, give or take five battleships, three cruisers, or there's T3s, or I can I can give general information without giving specific. Um, newer fleet scouts and just newer scouts in general may not have the ability to quickly say that. Or it's an operation where the FC needs very, very detailed information. Is that that's when you will use the uh, the full version D scan? Actually, I'm, I'm going to show you what one looks like. Hang on a second. Oh yeah, the link I have is shut down. Oh, this can miss down? No, no, no. The, yeah, dscan.me is down. They quit. Riker has a question in fleet chat. Yeah, I cannot control the jump. I can only control the warps. I've posted a link to the D-scan of this system. So if you click that link, it'll take you to a web, web browser outside of the game. This will show every type of D-scan information that's available on my D-scan. So I scan, when I scan, there are 32 ships. Those are what they are. And that's the ship classes. So that, that would be useful for an FC or a uh, op, op FC to kind of know what they're up against. 
Any questions about uh, that kind of descan and scouting? Okay, no questions. The last thing we're going to cover is starbursting. Um, starbursting is used mostly in AOE or group tackle, or it's it's. Some of you may have heard it called spacing. It's basically get the fuck away from one another. So everyone's going to pick a direction, and with the prop mods on, burn away. So we're going to starburst from the gate. Everyone starburst, starburst, starburst. As you can see, everyone's going a different direction. Everyone is expanding from the gate. Everyone is very hard to target, and one even warped away. This is useful because it gives enemies a hard time picking more than one target. If you're sniping or being sniped, it makes it difficult to pick targets. If you're being warped in on, it makes it hard to pin people down. It limits the amount of uh, attack interface from the enemy. I've never seen an FC use this, um, but it's in, the, it's in the dossier, so there you go. Any questions about starbursting? You actually do see it sometimes, especially with stealth bombers. Nice. Yeah, I haven't been on any bombing fleets in probably three years, so that's probably why I haven't heard about it. Alright, that concludes everything I have in the class. I have a few minutes to hang around and answer any questions anybody has. Other than that, you're free to drop fleet and return to what you were doing. That was great. That was great. Thank, Thank you, you JR. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Was very Thank everyone for Thank coming out. It was a pleasure having y'all. Yeah. When are you going to run a Fleet 102? What would you like Fleet 102 to be? I don't know. I'm interested in Logi and how to be in Logi. I'm a Logi anchor, so I can run. I can run something like that. What is Logi Fleet? Logi Fleet is basically. Um, it's not actually a Logi fleet, it's more of a wing or a squad in a fleet. And it Logi is like um, healers, they're repairmen, they fix ships, if, you, if you're if you not familiar with what Logi means. So like when he's when he asked, uh, he wants to be Logi, and I said I, I, I'm a Logi anchor, that means that I control a Logi squad or I give orders to a Logi team that heals the fleet or repairs the fleet. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, so you always have like this healing squad when you bombing is uh not always. Um, it depends on what the fleet is doing. If it's if it's a mass like corp or alliance fleet and like they're doing three hundred people, there'll usually be uh, a logi a logi team or logi squad. Um, if it's small gang, you're just talking like less than ten people in the fleet. Maybe you might have one logi, maybe not. It entirely depends on um, the intent of the fleet and the FC. Okay. Fomal posted something in fleet that uh, shows a couple of class recordings for Logi and kind of goes over the, the basics and more advanced things. Uh -huh. the, the rates say you cannot have uh, too many logis or too much of a logis, but uh, how it's in Brave? There are enough uh, people? Not really. Brave can always use more Logi. Everybody, Brave accepts just about everybody, so they get a lot of people who can't fly much or are new to the game. So they'll get a lot of Atrons. They'll get a lot of Desis. They'll get you know just entry level. Um, if they're not entry level and they're not specifically trained to be like Fleet Logi, they'll generally be in Caps or Cruisers or Battleships or Battle Cruisers or, or, or you know higher up subcaps that don't do Logi. Um, Logi is underappreciated because they don't get on kill mails. They don't do damage. They're not popular. Fleets can always use more Logi. Most times FCs will reimburse any Logi losses or give above reimbursement or give ships or Logi, Logi bros are, are love <laughs> for lack of a better way to say it. How do we train to get a luck? Be you can start off by uh, working the skills to get into an off Osprey. Um, that is one of the biggest 
uh, Logi ships we use right now. And I'll go ahead and link a fit as soon as I pull it up. Did, didn't the CCP change the fact that uh, Logi is now on kill mails? I think I uh, saw that. At, uh, I saw it, but I haven't had a chance to be Logi in a while, so I don't know. No, that's okay. still a work in progress. Maybe in a year? Maybe in two years? A lot of stuff is still a work in progress, it seems. I just went ahead and linked an Osprey fit that's kind of new bro, um, low skill, low entry level. It's a cap chaining Osprey for shield rep. I linked the skill plan for minimum and... There you go. And the recommended... Fomo, you're awesome. I didn't even know they still had that. After the Osprey, our current uh, prioritization is uh, training into Kirins, so the Tech 2 Logi frigates, and then into Basilisks, the Tech 2 Logi cruisers. We don't really use sites much, we don't really use scimitars much, but being trained into scimitars is good as well after you're done with passive training. Uh, okay. Okay, any more questions? I don't mind sitting around hanging out with y'all. I have just finished setting up Slack and I see there are some pings up, up in there. I'm sorry, say again. Uh, how do, uh, so I just okay. the Slack, and I see some things around. And how do I know if I'm a? a that's how do I say it? If I'm needed in that groups, or, or if, or what are the requirements for joining that group? Just add the channel and go talk. Uh, there's no hard restrictions. You can you can add any channel you want that's available to you. The private channels you can't see until they invite you. When I'm on Logi, um, I'm, I cap chain. Do I put the people in my cap chain in my watch list, or does that fluctuate depending on who's in or out of the Logi fleet? Uh, Logi. Yeah, fleet? it'll 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 be the Logi anchor that will tell you what to do, or the FC if it's a small enough fleet. Yeah, generally you put them on the watch list, yeah, because. Well, if uh, if they start fluctuating, if people start dying off, then you, you've got bigger problems. Yeah. But generally, uh, I like having them uh, as the top two on the watch list and then my anchor. But some people put them one on top, one on bottom, or after the FC. Yeah, you, as you fly more and more Logi fleets and you talk in Logi channels, you'll, you'll kind of learn what people do. Um, a lot of people are different. Some people are, you know, there's no standard. Um, so it's all a matter of preference. And as you, and as you do it, you'll you'll get better at it. You'll learn what you like and what works for you. All right. Anything else? That's it for me. Hey, no worries. I hope you guys. I hope to see you guys in fleets. Yep, and I always hang out in Dojo, so if you got questions, you can post them there. Um, either myself or someone will get to you. Yeah, thank you very much. That was very informative. Thanks. Yep, thank you for your time. Thank you all for showing up. It's a lot easier when you got people that actually hang out and want to learn. Hey, no worries. If you guys have anything else, let me know. Other than that, I'm going to drop fleet and uh, go get something to drink. My throat's killing me. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Y'all take care now. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.